Hey everyone, Lotus Prince here, and welcome to a behind-the-scenes video. For this particular video, I'm going to go into what I do to capture my video game console footage. If I'm capturing footage from the computer itself, computers offer various programs that you can use to capture footage, like Fraps, which is at this point becoming a bit outdated, or OBS, Open Broadcasting Software, but for console footage, that's a little more of a chore because it's a separate device that you're trying to get footage from. It's not your computer itself. So I'm going to go into what I have used and what I continue to use to get my footage. So at this point I've had, I guess, three capture devices and I'll go over them in order. The first capture device I ever used to pick up console footage at this point only works for older consoles, but it is called a Dazzle. This is a really convenient little thing. Uh, what it does is it takes your composite cables, which is yellow for the video, red and white for the audio, or if you have a really old console like an original Nintendo or a Sega Genesis, then you might only have mono audio, so that would be yellow for the video and just, I think, white for the audio, but in any case, you plug them into this device. This also has a port for S-Video, so that can give you slightly better quality. I think it's 480p instead of 480i, so a little bit better performance, but in any case, it can take your composite stuff. So you hook up your game system into one side of the Dazzle, and then the other side is this long wire, which eventually culminates in a USB, which plugs into your computer. So you can hook your game system directly up to your computer. Now, I don't think this was actually designed for game systems. I think the point of the Dazzle was so you could take your videotapes on your VCR and capture their footage so you can turn them uh, digital. So you don't have to use a VCR in when I got this thing, 2010. VCRs are getting just a bit outdated at that point. For game systems though, don't you think you'd want to hook them up to the TV? It's one thing to play them on your computer, but there's going to be a little bit of input delay from the system to the computer because you're inputting things as opposed to a VHS tape, which you just watch. So at that point, the Dazzle shows a bit of its weakness. So what I did to compensate for this was I went to a local electronics store and I picked up a splitter. Splitters are really good for being able to hook up a bunch of things just to the splitter and you can have only one output so everything, you don't need a thousand things connected to your TV. This is a different kind of splitter though. This has one input, and you can see here the yellow for the video and the white and red for the audio, or again, as video. So this has one input, but multiple outputs. So what I would do is I would have one output of cables go to the Dazzle, and the other output would go to the TV. So I can watch what I'm doing on the TV and use the splitter just as a pass-through device and receive no input delay, and the part that goes into the Dazzle to the computer would have a little bit of delay as compared to what's happening to the TV, but that's okay. All it's doing is capturing footage. So I can watch what I'm playing and play it, and the actual footage would capture on my TV. So what I end up with is a little bit more of a complicated appearance, but is a simple premise in and of itself. The only real catch is that the Dazzle does not need to plug into the wall, which is fantastic, but the splitter does. And this particular splitter has uh, one of these. It's, I guess for a vertical socket, it'd be a little bit obnoxious, but for a horizontal one, you should pretty much be okay with this. So if you're capturing footage off of a Dazzle, you're gonna need to plug it into a wall if you wanna hook it up to your TV, but you can very easily get this thing done. Now, how do I actually capture? Because at this point, the Dazzle just exists as a pass-through device. Well, it came with a CD-ROM, which contains Pinnacle software. My Pinnacle software was Pinnacle 12. Pinnacle is way past that point at this point. But if all you want to do is capture, then there you go. And I think it might even be its own editing program as well. I use a different editing program, but I think Pinnacle can stand on its own for editing. And if all you're doing is Let's Plays with just basic footage capture, you're not doing special effects or anything, then I think Pinnacle should serve you just fine for cutting footage and maybe doing fade-outs or things of that sort. 
nice and simple. So that's the Dazzle, only really good for retro systems, but back then that was really all you needed, so it perfectly served its purpose. However, I eventually got a PS3, and the Dazzle is just not happening for that. Um, well, well that's not true, it could. The PS3 does allow composite output, but you're not going to get HD footage at that time, and the PS3's whole gimmick was that you could go all the way up to 1080. The PS2 could do a little bit of that, but this was an actual HD console, so at this point, I needed a different capture device. So what did I do? Well, I went ahead and picked up an HD PVR. So the PVR, it, this one unfortunately does have to plug into the wall, and annoyingly, it's a very wide horizontal plug, so I promise you, you're taking up two outlets on your, on your wall strip. But the good news is that this thing does not need a splitter, it is a splitter. Now, it, it does have composite input, but for the really old systems like the Genesis or even up to the N64, I don't think it likes those very much. So for those systems, I actually suck with the Dazzle. But for things with component output, like the PS2 and PS3, well then, I could hook them up to the back, and the beauty of this device is that it is its own splitter. I don't need a separate device. This does have to plug into the wall, but hey, the other splitter did too, so it's no gain, no loss. So we have the input on the bottom for component, which is uh, red, blue, green, and then the, uh, the standard white and red for the audio, and then right above the input is the same set of plugs for the output. So you would hook the system up to this device here, and then output it to the TV, and you would, uh, where was it? There was a, oh yeah, and out here is where um, this, this plug would plug in, and it also had a, uh, a USB out, which would be over here, I believe, which connects to your computer. So this is sort of an all-in-one device, which is nice and convenient. And again, capturing component footage, this is how I've captured every single PS3 Let's Play I've ever done, and I eventually was able to pick up for myself a, uh, a three-in-one set of component cables where the component cables would plug into here, but it's split into three different things that can plug into the PS2 and PS3. That's just one thing for both. There's an output that lets you hook it up to the uh, Xbox 360, and I think even the regular Xbox, and there's a third one that allows you to hook it up to the Nintendo Wii. So, to this day, I still use that set of component split things. And at that point, you can use the component cables to plug it into this. However, I no longer use this particular device to capture my component game console footage. Although I could use this in a pinch. But at this point, I have upgraded one more time to what I think is the ideal solution at least at this point. So what I have here is uh, an Elgato HD. This thing is beautiful. Now, the, uh, the good news is that it is, again, its own splitter. You hook the system up to the Elgato, and then from outside, you put this into your, um, this, this is the capture device, so from the outside you put this into your TV. Now the bad news is that the HD60 there are two kinds of Elgato HDs. One of them is HD, and this one is HD 60, which can capture up to 60 frames per second. The regular HD has component in. This one does not. This is HDMI only. So at this point, I use this for the, um, the PS3, and um, I'll go into more detail with other things later, but let's just go ahead and say the PS3 and PS4 for now, and the PlayStation TV. Now, the thing about the PS3, PS4, and PS TV is that it's really frustrating. They have a thing associated with them called HDCP. It's a sort of copyright protection which prevents you from being able to capture video. Now, the PS4 has mostly taken this away. At this point, you might encounter certain long cutscenes or like opening movies or things like that of, of some video games where you'll actually get a little pop-up message, unless you turn it off, that says, oh, hold on now, you're not going to be able to capture this part, but everything else, have fun. You know, the, one of the PS4's main features is being able to capture brief bits of game footage and share it with your friends. So, mostly, 
HDCP isn't a problem for it, but it can be. And for the PS3 and the PS TV, it's just not an option. You cannot capture footage from those systems with HDMI cables. That's why I said I've been using Component up to maybe only a, a relatively recently, uh, relatively speaking. However, I have been able to capture PS3 with HDMI starting with Yakuza 5, and I've been able to Let's Play games like Corpse Party Blood Drive and Danganronpa off of the PS TV. How? Well, it's a little bit annoying, but I have another bit of pass-through technology. What I have my Elgato hooked up to here is it moves along, and then I have this little block here. This is a separate device. This is an HDMI splitter. Once again, one input, multiple outputs. This one has two outputs. Now, what's the point of a splitter? Well, I don't actually need to split anything. Like I said, the Elgato is its own splitter, but for this particular HDMI splitter I have, it's called View HD. Uh, what this thing does, and I don't think it was intentional, I think it just happens, is that it scrambles the HDCP. And with this little device here, this is how I was able to capture my PSTV footage at all, my PS3 footage of Yakuza 5 and anything I want to capture the HDMI cable, and it's how I was able to capture the, uh, the cutscenes I shouldn't be able to capture from something like JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Eyes of Heaven for the PS4. But once again, it's a splitter, so the bad news is that I do need to hook it up to the wall, and yes, it has multiple sockets that it takes up because it's wide, but I can bypass HDCP, so that's good. Now, at this point, my Elgato is actually my one-size-fits-all for all of my capturing devices, or for all of my video game devices that I wish to capture from. Now, how in the world is this possible when it only takes HDMI? Well, I have one more thing that I wish to show you. It is not a capture device in and of itself, but it is made capturing way, way, way easier. What I have here is something that I imported from uh, Japan. This is something that uh, Vice the Bold, my friend, told me about, otherwise I never would have known about it. This is, right here, if you can see that, a compact upscaler unit. Uh, an XGRB, or excuse me, XRGB Mini Frame Meister. This thing is freaking fantastic. The uh, intended purpose, as you might imagine, is right in its name. It's an upscaler unit. So this takes old systems, and it allows them to display in 1080p on your modern HD TVs so you get a better look from your old systems. But that's irrelevant to capture, right? Well, the good news is this thing has a lot, a lot of stuff going on for it. So um, first of all, we have composite in over here. We have these little, yeah, now you can see them. We have the, uh, the white, red, yellow, and the S-video. So you can get that. Over here, it actually takes RGB. So. What that means is, uh, you know, if you're American, you might not know this, but Europe has a wonderful little hookup called uh, RGB, and I think SCART cables. So those are basically the best quality you can get from really old systems, where America had to settle for composite, or in the best case scenario, S-Video, RGB is really where it's at. It has a noticeable improvement on systems like the Super Nintendo, but particularly on the Genesis. Backgrounds really pop with RGB. So if I ever have systems that allow RGB out without modifications, like the Genesis, I actually can hook up RGB cables to my American Genesis. It's just that American TVs don't have RGB in, so I can't do anything with them. But this Frame Meister does have RGB in, so I could hook the systems up to it this way. Now some systems, for those of you who might know what SCART cables look like, they're this really wide, crazy looking cable that this, this device doesn't have any room for. But the good news is that there's an adapter that you can use to hook up the big R SCART cable and put it into the smaller RGB version that looks kind of like an S-Video input, which goes into here. So you can hook up your composite and your RGB to here, and on the back, 
you have HDMI out. So this is how I'm able to play my old systems with the Elgato, is that I can hook up the old systems to the FrameMeister, spit it out via HDMI, and send that into my Elgato, which then captures via HDMI normally. However, we're not even done. This thing also accepts HDMI in. This might be good if you really want to get 1080 out of 720 games. So this is really good for something like the Xbox 360 or the PS3, because those did have 1080 games, but a lot of them were 720. So if you want to upscale those, then that's how you can do that. But not only that, there's one extra little thing. This doesn't naturally take component cables, but fortunately, it comes with, or at least it has the option to come with, a, uh, a little adapter that makes this happen. So here you have another red and white set of ports for your audio here, but then there's this thing that says, if I could find it on the camera, yeah, D5? So there's this weird looking like monitor cable looking thing. So what you do is if you have your component cables with your red, green, blue for the video and red and white for the audio, the red and white goes into the audio, but I have this other cable here that has red, green, blue, like, holes or ports. So your component cables, the blue goes into the blue, the red goes into the red, etc. You hook those up, the prongs go into the holes, and then this uh, outputs to this DS5 looking uh, plug here. So that would then go into the FrameMeister, so voila, you have component input to the FrameMeister. So I have been streaming PS2 footage, I have been streaming Genesis footage, uh, by way of the FrameMeister and capturing it with the Elgato. It's been very, very convenient. So at this point, this is how I capture footage. Everything either just plugs into the Elgato because it's HDMI, or if it's not, it hooks up to the FrameMeister, which then goes to the Elgato, and I can still capture by making my Elgato think that it's getting HDMI footage. It's, it's fantastic. Now the beauty of this is not only does it allow capture and to be uh, and streaming to be easier, not only does it upscale, but it actually does two other things that greatly solve my problems. One of them is something I didn't even realize was a problem at first. It never occurred to me, but for really old systems, they were designed for CRT TVs, but on HD TVs, there's more of loading. You know, if you if you ever want a comparison of what I'm talking about. Change the channel on your old CRT. Just channel surf. Channel surfing isn't really a thing that happens anymore because of HD TVs. In the old days, you'd be like, what's on TV? Click, 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 click. What's on this channel? What's on that channel? Let's see what's happening. You don't do that anymore because it takes too long. Have you noticed that? When you input a channel, if you even change the channel by one channel up, it's wait, new channel. Wait, new channel. So surfing... It's not slow, but it's definitely slower than it used to be. That's why if you ever want to see what's on TV now, you bounce to the TV Guide channel and scroll through that. It was actually faster to channel surf on CRTs because the TV Guide channel for us back in the day slowly scrolled, and if you missed the channel you wanted, you gotta wait for it to loop. Now you can you could surf the TV Guide channel and not surf the regular channels. It's weird. It's reversed. But what I mean by this is that it takes a little bit for the TV to load things. So if you're trying to play an RPG like Final Fantasy 1 where it's turn-based and you're like, I want to attack, I want to defend, you're not going to notice any real difference, but if you're doing a fast-paced platformer like Mario Brothers or uh, Sonic the Hedgehog or Donkey Kong Country 2, or if you're playing a fighting game that requires a lot of very quick reflexes, you might notice a little bit of input lag if you're hooking up your old system to an HD TV, and that's a real problem. The good news is that the FrameMeister compensates for this input lag. I, it made it so my first experience with the FrameMeister, uh, my friend Vice showed me just Donkey Kong Country 2, and I was playing a little bit of it at his, at his place, and I was thinking to myself, oh, wow, the, uh, the picture looks pretty good, and I didn't even know that lag was an issue. He mentioned to me that Hey, you notice there's no input lag? You notice that when you press right, you go right immediately? Oh yeah. So you can actually play uh, old games not only at all, but also comfortably on your HDTV with the FrameMeister. And 
on top of all that, what's really interesting is that I said that it upscales your old game footage. The thing with the FrameMeister is it doesn't naturally know how to. Different game systems have different ways they want to appear on your TV. I can't just say, make a 1080. I mean, it'll do it, but you might get weird stretched picture or something like that. But the good news is that within the FrameMeister's menu, it has its own little remote control, within the FrameMeister's uh, menu system, you can actually adjust how wide or how tall the picture should be. You could adjust the color, the gamma, you could even add mediocre looking, I'll admit, but you can add scan lines to the thing if you want that retro look to it. You can um, basically tweak the picture in however many ways you want. So if you want just that perfect look for that one game you're playing, you can make it happen. And on top of that, if you have a little uh, SD mini inside this thing, then you could actually store I forgot how many, not a million, but you can store a bunch of settings for games that you want. So when I turn on my old game systems, the first thing I do is, again, how am I hooking these things up? Am I using RGB? Am I using component? So I'll press the RGB button on my remote, I'll press the component button on my remote, and it'll know, oh, this is the system you want me to use? Okay. So then it'll show me the picture, but from there, I can go to a data menu and load previously saved visual settings. So I can go, oh, I'm about to play the PS2. Let me go to my PS2 setting on my FrameMeister. Oh, I'm about to play the Genesis. Let me go to my Genesis setting on my FrameMeister. So I can get not only generically upscaled output, but the best possible upscaled output. Now, this normally requires a whole hell of a lot of trial and error, and that is a pain. But somebody has actually uploaded to um, to a website his uh, pre-saved settings for every system he's been able to get his hands on. So you can download those settings and just copy-paste them to your little SD Mini if you uh, have one and, and a FrameMeister that you want to put it into, and you can get these settings for yourself with minimal effort. So it is super convenient. And by the way, there's one more thing the FrameMeister does that even Vice was not able to tell me about because this isn't really his field so much. This is more regarding captured video. If you want to just play the game, you're going to have a good time. But for someone like me who is a Let's Player, this is a big deal indeed. Now, I did not mention this about my previous capture devices, but for the Dazzle, when I'm using Pinnacle, I don't know if it's a Dazzle issue or if it's a Pinnacle issue. But either way, when I capture old games, the game is, or the, the program is kind enough to tell me if I'm ever getting dropped frames. Usually when you start the capture, there'll be literally one frame drop. It'll be like, oh, there's a little, okay, moving on. And then you just get your smooth capture. But sometimes when I start the program for the first time, it might say, drop frames. More, 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 more. So at that point, I have to stop the capture, close the program, reopen it, start again. Usually it works. But for some weird systems, like the Dreamcast or the Saturn, it just sometimes drops frames. If you've been following me for a long time, you might have seen my Silent Hill Shattered Memories Let's Play. I captured it on the PS2, and there's one part of the game where I just had a text apology in the beginning of the installment because I lost frames in the middle of recording. So all of a sudden, the audio was great, but parts of the video just disappeared. So in the installment, I was here, now I'm here. Sorry, deal with it. The game autosaves, I can't recapture again. So, it is a very rare problem. I think it's only happened once or twice ever. But it can happen. So that was a nuisance. Now, for the HD PVR, again, I don't know if it's the PVR or if it's the program that I forgot to mention. It comes uh, on a CD with it, uh, ArcSoft Showbiz. I don't know if it's the PVR or Showbiz, but it usually... Yeah, like, honestly, more often than not, maybe it's my computer, it could be my older computer, but it uh, often captures in really low frame rate. So again, the audio sounds great, but the video might be like four frames per second. So I'm trying to run one frame at a time. So a 25 minute installment might be like four or five hours on this thing, and it'll look insane. So with my editing program, I'm able to fix that honestly with minimal trouble, 
but if you don't have an editing program that can adjust frame rates, then that can really, really suck for you. So again, for the, um, for the capture, it can be a bit of a chore. Now, I have not had this kind of problem with the Elgato, and a real benefit of the Elgato is that there's no CD it comes with. If you want to download Game Capture HD, you can do it. In fact, you can, you can do it right now. Right now. You can Google it and just download it for nothing. Because the way the Game Capture HD works is that it only works if the computer detects that you have an Elgato hooked up to it. So that's, that's how they get you. They don't need to worry about people pirating their software. You must have their hardware for it to work. It's genius. Now, I have not had any weird frame rate problems or f dropped frames or anything like that with the Elgato and Game Capture HD, which is wonderful. But even outside of that context, even if you have a good capture program, there is something I've noticed. Possibly for the Genesis, I haven't experimented with this, but definitely with the Sega CD is that if you watched my Snatcher Let's Play a while back, you might not have noticed it because I tried really hard to fix this problem, but you might notice there are some times where it starts to desync and then it's back. Video's getting a little ahead or a little behind the audio, then it's back. Because I painstakingly went through every installment to try to fix the little problem, because I've noticed that with captured footage off of the Sega CD, and again, maybe Genesis, don't know, but I've noticed that it, the audio and video just desync over time. I don't know why. Even with Dazzle, even with the PVR, that was not a problem for my other systems. It's, it's the Sega, it's Sega CD. And again, probably the Genesis. If you want an example of this, what I recommend you do is go to YouTube and look up Sega CD Star Wars Chess. Some really cool user took an incredibly long time and captured every single animation for when a piece is captured. What does it look like when a pawn takes a bishop? What does it look like when a bishop takes a knight? You get to see all of that, and the animations are great, but it's a long video. And by the time you get to the end, oh man, you notice it. It's like... clap. Like, like the sound and video are way off by the end. It's a mess. So, one thing I was hoping for that Vice could not promise, because he didn't know, was that somehow the Framemeister seems to have solved that problem as well, because uh, I have captured the three mainline Sonic the Hedgehog games, I've captured Ghouls and Ghosts, and I've, I've even streamed those, and zero problems. And honestly, that was the main reason that I picked up the Framemeister at all, was I, I was hoping that it would solve that problem. It was a gamble, because I'll, I'll be blunt, this thing was expensive at the time. And now that it's been discontinued, I think it might even be more expensive. So I was really hoping that it would work, and fortunately for me, it did. Now at the time, I had only really cared about this, this the frame issue and dropping frames when capturing. I was hoping to God that wouldn't be a problem. And thank you, it has not been a problem, but what I didn't realize is that it's just plain a convenient way to use Elgato Capture. Because with the HD PVR, I would use that to capture the, uh, the PS3. I would use the Dazzle to capture composite systems. Because, again, the PVR has composite in, but it doesn't really like it. So I would have to unhook one capture device, rehook another. That's why when I started capturing PS3 footage, it took forever for me to do retro systems again. I didn't feel like swapping capture devices. And when I got a PS4, well, now it's HDMI only. What do I do? You know, I, I don't have component coming out of the PS4, so I had to get an Elgato. But now I can hook everything up to the Elgato, so my life is so much easier as a result. If I had to point out a flaw of the Framemeister, though, it would definitely be that it takes a few seconds to adjust to new resolutions that it is being given. For example, if I want to swap inputs from component to RGB or composite, then you're going to get a few seconds of a black screen and then the picture will come in. Now this is problematic because the game continues, you just can't see it. Also, if you're capturing footage at the time, then it'll kill the capture. So that can also really interfere with capturing or streaming or both. On top of that, some games 
have resolution changes mid-game. You know, normally this wouldn't be a big deal, just turn the game on and you're good to go, but some things like, I think, Final Fantasy VIII have menus of different resolutions than gameplay. So you're going to get a few seconds of black screen when you go in and out of a menu. So for that reason, I would just play PS1 games on a PS3 and save yourself the trouble. Don't even hook it up to the FrameMeister. Just capture directly. But then there are weird games like Resident Evil 1 on the Saturn, where the menu is different from the uh, the main game. At least the title screen is different from the main game. So going in and out of the game still has this weird black screen issue and there just isn't much you could do about it except for quickly restart the capture once the framemeister understands what's going on. Evil. That said though, in the grand scheme of things, this is a minor problem. It only comes up in very specific cases mid-game. Otherwise, just start recording a second or two after you turn the thing on and you'll probably still catch the uh, the opening logos. So I hope that this has been enlightening for you. Um, Capturing games is really not overly difficult. You just need a little bit of uh, of hookups, and you don't need a FrameMeister for anything. If you have, you know, older capture devices, you can use them for older systems, just so long as your TV allows them to be hooked up to them. If not, then there may be adapters that allow you to have whatever you're using in an HDMI out. There may be things of that sort. So look for those if you want to get that old retro feel. But this is at least how I do things. So I. Uh, I hope this has been informative. Until next time, everyone.